Welcome to House Stuff in My Car Wars channel. This is the final video of the series titled How to Replace the Cylinder Heads on Dodge 4.7 liter single overhead cam. In today's video, I'll show you how to finish putting this engine back together, get this vehicle on the road. So stay tuned. Both cylinder heads are on and they're torqued properly. Don't forget to connect your ground straps on both heads. You know, each one has a ground strap on the back of the head. Make sure you connect your exhaust flanges on both sides. During removal, I show you how my tensioner broke off. So my next step is to remove the broken timing chain tensioner. It's held in place by this and this bolt. This is the oil pump. With the chain tensioner removed, this is the perfect opportunity to install a new one. You know, this is your chance. Uh, the oil pressure in this Durango was good, and it doesn't have high mileage, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. So install the new tensioner and tighten the bolts to 250 inch-pounds. Now don't get it wrong, they're not foot-pounds, they're inch-pounds. So otherwise you'll snap these bolts. I showed you during this assembling that I left all my components in their original locations when I put them on this cardboard. That way I knew which one was which. Now to install these chains, when you place them on the engine and then you already have this two sprockets on and then remember if you put rubber bands it'll be easier to keep them in place and they won't move you will be able to see through this opening right here the alignment marks you know the different color links remove the sprocket and then install it on the chain and then guide it on and then install the sprocket ball finger tight once you have the chains aligned and in place then you can proceed to torque the camshaft sprockets that go here to 90 foot pounds each bolt. Once you have the chains in, you know, not completely installed, but uh, the sprockets, the crankshaft sprocket, and the upper sprocket for the lower chain on, just install the bolt, just leave a finger tight. That will keep this from wanting to come out as you install the other chains. To be able to slide the timing chain over the sprocket, over the camshaft sprocket, like I said, you gotta remove the bolt from the sprocket, slide the sprocket out, and then slide the chain over it with the different color link aligned with the dot on the camshaft and the VA mark up. And then just slide it back on the camshaft and install the bolt. There's your alignment right there. Hey, check it out. The family tour is wanting to see how the progress is going with the cylinder heads. Wants to make sure I do a good job. Awesome. Let's install it finger tight for right now. But remember, the final torque is 90 foot pounds on those camshaft sprocket bolts. So you already aligned the mark here. Verify through this window right here that you can see the different color links which you should because ideally you didn't move anything when you uh, removed the chains and you kept it organized once the chain is installed and aligned use some scissors to cut the rubber bands and then proceed to do the same thing on the other side on the other chain and then you're gonna look on this window to make sure that the color links are shown right there once the chains are installed continue installing the remaining components the torque for these bolts for the timing chain guides, 21 foot pounds. Same thing as the tensioners, you know, the hydraulic tensioners. 21 foot pounds, 21 foot pounds. The pivot bolt is only gonna it only requires 150 inch pounds. So you have two, you got you have this one and this one. So install those components in the reverse order you remove them and make sure the bolts are torqued. Also, prior to installing the tensioners on, you'll need to compress them on a vise and slide a pin through this orifice right here so they remain compressed and then once everything is installed and you can remove the pins to allow them to operate. When compressing your hydraulic tensioner, use a small clip to push the locking pin up and then as you compress it, 
you will be able to drive it in without breaking it. Once it's compressed, insert a pin. It's going to keep this part from wanting to come out and it'll lock it in place. So put a little pressure as you release the vise. There you go. I put this shop towel where this part makes contact with the vise so it wouldn't damage it. So now it's fully compressed and I can install it on the engine. And then once it's installed and the uh, bolts are tightened to the proper specs which, uh, which is 21 foot pounds then release the pin and it will allow it to operate. And then also make sure you clean this mounting surface really good. And repeat the same steps with the other tensioner on the other side. Once you're done installing all the remaining components, remove the locking pin from the primary chain tensioner and tighten this bolt to 25 foot-pounds. And don't forget, can't just sprocket bolts, 90 foot-pounds, both sides. And if you have a tool like the one I made, then after they're all tight, then go ahead and remove it. And you're ready to move on. Before installing the rocker arms, remove all the lifters, keep them in order, put them in a small pan, put enough oil that they're submerged in oil, leave them in that pan full of oil for at least 20-30 minutes, and then go ahead and put them back on, you know, after they're fully charged with oil. Use the special tool to compress the springs and install the rocker arms back on. I already showed you how to do it in a previous video, so no need to repeat this step. But <clears throat> another thing too, uh, make sure that you coat the tip of the valves and the tip of the lifters with assembly lube. Uh, same thing with the cam lobes, coat them with assembly lube. Uh, that way when you first start your engine before you get before the oil gets up here everything is lubricated and it's not gonna start dry your chains make sure that you squirt them with engine oil all of them um, for the same purpose especially if they're new I mean if they're new it's, it's an absolute must otherwise they will wear um, because they started dry once you did all that once you install all your rocker arms, then go ahead and install your valve covers, remove the old timing cover gasket, install a new timing cover gasket, and install a new crankshaft seal, and install the timing cover back on. Then finish installing the remaining components in the reverse order you remove them. Don't forget to coat the fuel injector seals with petroleum jelly before you guide them in. And the harmonic balancer, make sure you install it with a harmonic balancer installer so you don't damage the threads. Uh, change your oil, you know, put a new filter, put new oil. Any other components that may need to be replaced like hoses, um, definitely a new thermostat, especially if that's the reason why your engine overheated. This particular engine, it was the water pump, but it was already replaced. Like I said, install all your components back on. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to that point and then I'll start this engine to show you how it runs so this is what our engine compartment looks now that everything has been installed got all our parts back in place we change the oil put new oil we fill the cooling system with 50-50 uh, coolant mix battery is already connected so it's time to start it so here's the moment of truth let's go ahead and start it up Nice and smooth. This is going to be a great running Durango. Every manufacturer cylinder head was definitely the way to go. Nice and smooth right from the first start. That is awesome. Now one of the things you want to do when you start it, go ahead and raise the RPM to 2000. Keep your eye on the temperature gauge because if it starts going past half, that means the thermostat is not open. And then the reason to uh, increase the RPMs to 2000 at first 
is to get every, you know, to get the oil flowing really good and all the parts that uh, only get lubricated through splash, uh, you know, with all that oil moving around, everything is going to get lubricated really well. So, this is going to be a fun vehicle. It, it seems like it has plenty of power. Very responsive. We're gonna have fun with this ride. It's gonna be a screamer. All this work that we did paid off. So just remember, make sure uh, you get all the air out of the system. And obviously this is the end of the series. It was a bit of a lengthy job. But I just didn't want to make this video so short that it would leave you with a lot of questions. So I just took the time to uh, record almost every step. And either if, whether you're doing it right now, whether you have a vehicle that has uh, this kind of problem and you need to replace heads, or it's something that you're planning to do in the near future, you know, hopefully this video has helped you a lot and you have the confidence to do it yourself. As you can tell, it's quite simple. You just have to be careful and make sure you do every step uh, correctly. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have, we'll have more tutorials coming up, different vehicles, different stuff, different problems. Also, make sure you visit our online store. We have a great selection of accessories for cars, trucks, and SUVs. See you next time.